Hey everybody, welcome back. Today, we're going to do something a little different. I've had a lot of requests from you guys asking me about my system, specifically asking me about the fact that I've mentioned several times that my system runs mostly off the grid. Most of my gear is battery powered. I've had a lot of guys ask me how I'm doing that, what that situation is. So we're going to go into that today and I'm going to share with you guys how this started and how I wound up where I am and why I'm off the grid with a lot of my gear. Before I get started though, I want to thank the guys at Southwest Audio Fest. They put on a great show down in Dallas. They had a good time, went and visited a lot of people, got recognized by a lot of people, had a lot of fun, and I think they put on a really nice show and hopefully that will continue to grow uh, the next time they put that on. Now, how I got started in Gear that's off the grid. I've had people ask me, do you have a transformer? Or do you run it off solar power? Or, uh, you know, what's going on there? Well, my good buddy, Gary Dodd, designed some of the best tube amps and tube preamps in the industry. He was, he was a genius when it came to circuitry design. And he, at some point, decided, you know, if I can get the AC noise down as low as possible, and he was experimenting with balanced power supplies and things in the transformers and really focusing on lowering AC noise. But he got to thinking, you know, if I could get away from the AC noise entirely and get off the grid, might be some merit there. So he started working with battery powered tube preamp designs. And I remember the first prototype he had and how we listened to that thing. I couldn't believe how clean it was and how great it sounded. And just how big of a deal it was to get away from the AC noise. People don't realize just how much the AC contaminates everything because there's a lot of noise that's on those lines. So what we've got in front of us here is a preamp that he made for me. And I remember going with him to one of the specialty wood stores there in Dallas. And we were looking at woods that I wanted for my side panels and my front face. And I picked out a, a log it was pretty thick. It was a pretty good size one. And that's that's what this was made from. And he had done a, a, quite a few of these and the results were fantastic. And I'm going to take the lid off of this thing and I'm going to show you what he came up with and how this thing all got started being off the grid. So he figured out a way to take a 24 volt supply and ramp up the voltage from 24 volt DC to uh, 300 and something volts AC running these tubes and what what we've got here is there's a pair of tubes and the circuitry that he comes up with for the tubes is potted in a little pot right below the tubes so that you can see the secret sauce and this little ingenious version here what it does is it has two on switches it has an on in one direction and an on in the other direction Ooh, how about that that thing's freaking out the camera with the uh, the little RF signal there. I don't know if you guys could hear that in the audio. Ooh, that does freak out the camera. So, all right, let's don't do that. Um, when you turn it on to one direction, what you're doing is you're running on two of these 12 volt batteries, and these are um, a five amp hour battery. So you got them in series. You're running 24 volts, and when you're in the on position on this side, the charger's automatically charging the other batteries. Then let's say you run these batteries down to a point where the batteries are getting low. You switch it to the on position on the other side, and now you're running off of this bank of batteries while this bank is charging. So you pretty much have continuous use all the time. Well, one of, these, one of those days there, Gary decided that instead of running it like he has it there where he's got two different groups, he series paralleled the whole group. So you still got 24 volts, but instead of running on two batteries, you run on four batteries. So you got a lot more battery power there, twice the juice. Um, and it sounded better. I mean, it, it, it sounded notably better. The dynamics picked up even more. Um, it was just fuller and more had more drive just by having the extra group of batteries on there, which got him thinking, okay, using a bigger battery and more batteries started, you know, clearly sounded better. So he started experimenting with 
an external battery and then doing away with these and doing something that's external and they start experimenting with a design that was purposely built and designed to run on 12 volts and that's where we wound up with this one in fact we're going to pause here and i'm going to move this and we're going to bring this gear over and some amps and we're going to talk about where this went so hold on all right a little different set of gear here where we went from the big preamp with the batteries inside was to this little jewel, this little jewel right here. This was a preamp that's a two preamp designed to run just on 12 volts only. And I'm going to try to slide the lid off of it here. And there were some other little tweaks that went into this little design as well. We got to experiment with the batteries and we went 50 amp hour battery and then 100 amp hour battery and different chargers and how to charge it and we tried lithium batteries and you name it and then we we, we discovered the lithium battery sounded horrible i don't we didn't know exactly at the moment at that time what was different about the lithium batteries but they did not sound good um, we figured some stuff out later as to why that was but not important what did sound best was the big 100 amp hour batteries and we found that the little c-tech chargers would um would keep those things topped off. In other words, we could just leave the CTEC charger on. It's a little trickle charger, and it wouldn't affect the audio signal, and it would keep the battery at 13 and a half volts to you know 12 volts all the time. So we never drained the battery down, never really discharged it. So the batteries would last eight years or more. Um, and a hundred amp hour battery. That's a big battery. It's a 50 something pound battery, maybe 60 pound. It's heavy. Um, they're like 225 bucks, cheaper than a power cord. And that plus the C-Tech charger and you're good for a long time. So the battery issue is a non-issue and it does offer a lot of improvements as far as getting stuff off the grid. Now, this one is a single tube. It's a single 6H30 tube. And as you can see, some goodies in there. There's some MyFlex copper foil caps in the signal path there that are the output coupling caps. And there's some big Teflon caps that are coupling caps. This one has three inputs and it has three outputs on it. So I can do a main pair of mono blocks and four servo subs off of this thing. And I can send full range signal to the subs and limited low frequency signal to, um, to the main speakers if I want. So that's where we went with this thing. And it, again, it got various tweaks and we wound up using naked viche resistors and all kinds of crazy stuff and the secret sauce the secret circuit is potted under the tube so gary kind of kept that to himself and when we went to the show last at uh rocky mountain audio fest and oh it's been several years back we had some big open baffle line sources we did for mockingbird audio and we were driving it with this system which was completely off the grid uh, we were using a db audio labs dac at the time i think that actually was on the grid and then we were using these tube amps these are 30 watt monoblock tube amps that are battery powered so we had an, the entire system minus the servo subs and the DAC off the grid at that time even the mac mini that we were using was off the grid and i'll get to that in a minute and stephen stone at the absolute sound said we had the best sound at the show cost no object which we thought was great because these are the lamps. Gary priced them at thirty-four hundred bucks for the pair, and you could get the preamp for sixteen to eighteen hundred bucks, depending on what caps you wanted. And at the time, that was the base level model. So we weren't even near cost, no object cost, but we were there in that performance level. And it was a big deal when we went to shows that the whole front end of the system would be off the grid because we didn't have to deal with the AC noise at the hotels, which was horrendous. Uh, sometimes we'd get a system all figured out, sounding the way we wanted, everything's perfect, and then set it up at a show and think, ooh, that doesn't sound the same here. Even with the treatment in the room, the AC noise was a whole different issue, and then we'd have to start playing with power cables and balanced power supplies and, and Uber buses and stuff to try and get that noise level down and create the right balance. Um, the 30-watt tube amps, I don't use them very often in the system, they're kind of a standby. I've got a lot of other amps that I use, a 300B, some chip amps. Most of the whole amplification system on my system 
is on the grid. It uses power and it does use power through an Uber bus and some of it through a balanced power supply also built by Dot Audio. So the, the amplification needs power. It needs to be on the grid. Unless you're using these little lamps here, which 30 watts battery powered sounds really good. It really does. Um, but when you need a little more juice than that, it's, it's hard to get big amplification off of a battery. It doesn't last very long. But if you can drop the whole front end, uh, all the noise level down, it's amazing what happens. So in my system, first off, all the music is controlled by a Mac Mini. Now, the reason I have a Mac Mini is because it beat the crap out of my CEC transport back in the day. I had one of the top-of-the-line transports to an external DAC. And my buddy showed up and they said, hey, Danny, check out this little Mac Mini. We're going we're gonna to burn a CD to the Mac Mini. And then we're going to compare the Mac Mini to your CEC transport going to the same DAC. Well, the Mac Mini crushed the CEC transport. I mean, all the jitter, felt, jitter error and everything along with trying to read a disc was all gone. And it really sounded better. So the very next day, I ordered a Mac Mini and I sold the CEC transport for over twice what the Mac Mini cost. So I upscaled and made money. Never looked back. Then wound up getting a newer Mac Mini, and my guys in that little digital realm began doing modifications. They began um, maxing it out with gaming RAM, solid state hard drive, um, shutting down things in the operating system that didn't need to be shut, you know, didn't need to be running, and things like that. And the thing about the Mac Mini was it it ran on a 12 volt supply. It had a 12 volt switching power supply internal. Now. That's a lot lower voltage than a lot of the other computers out there. Most computers, streamers, or something, most of them are running on uh, 18 to, to 19 volts. That's what your laptop's running on. The fact that the Mac Mini was a low voltage design already meant that it had less noise within the system. Then we wound up removing the switching power supply from the Mac Mini and replacing that with a connector on the back that let us plug it into a battery. Then we wound up experimenting with battery buses which buffered the battery and any ripple and noise and impedance of the battery and that made an improvement and it seemed like there for quite a while we just made improvement 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 especially in the digital domain and it came a long way All, suddenly digital began to sound like analog almost it was amazing and i'm still using that highly modified mac mini running on a big 100 amp hour battery. That's that's where it starts. Then it goes to this DAC. Now my DAC is a prototype that some guys from the DB Audio Labs and other companies use this as a test bed. Dave Elledge used it and we put a battery bus in it. Gary Dodd got a hold of it. It's got his output stage on it. It's, it's based on a 24-bit Wolfson chipset, but everything about it is different. There's an I2S direct input and that's the only input that's on this thing. So people are always asking me, what DAC do you use? Well, it's a one-off custom DAC, and it's still my favorite. And I've had a lot of DACs in here, including a lot of DACs from Denifrips, uh, the Hollow May DAC. This is still my favorite DAC. It's still in the system, and it runs on an external 12-volt battery. So we got Mac Mini to the DAC, all off the grid, then to my battery powered to preamp all off the grid. So low noise floor, clean sound, good dynamics, good resolution, good everything. We're not creating noise that the amplifier is then having to amplify. So anytime people come to, to hear to my house, they listen to my system and the first things they say is, wow, the noise floor is just gone. Can't believe how how quiet it is between notes and space between notes and how much that affects the imaging and the layering and things like that. So all of that was a progression to get to this point. And some of it kind of happened by chance. A lot of it has to do with Gary Dodd and what he was able to do. And that's where I've ended up. And until something better comes along, that's where the system's going to be. I'm always open to try everything that comes in the door, but I always go back to this off the grid system. To me, that's what sounds great. So no, I don't use any power inverters and things like that. I don't know of any gear out there that's designed to run on 12 volts. I'm just a little bit of a, 
uh, maybe a little esoteric in that way. Um, I, I've, I've helped with the development of some of these products that are designed to be run on 12 volts. I wish more companies would do that. I know a lot of them are hesitant to have a 100 amp hour battery sitting there in someone's house. These are AGM batteries. They don't outgas anything. They're sealed lead acid batteries. So it's no big deal to have them in the listening room. You can put them in a decorative box if you want. They're, that's not an issue. But anyway, that's how it all works. And if you have any questions about running systems off the grid, or if you have any questions about my system and specifically, throw them in the comments section. Um, thank you for all the questions about this. And I hope this answered a few of those questions. And that'll be all for this episode. See you guys in the next one.